And I'm here without Harambe. Oh, I love Harambe. Hey, new Patreon subscriber. Hey. Hey guys, how's it going? It is I, the real Randy Chavez. Uh, I'm not putting you guys down yet. Uh, Patreon member, again, Patreon down below, referral code down below. Um, I'm going to show you right now a screenshot of how to make it easier. Just um, if you want to withdraw, here's how you can do it the best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. All right, is it internet? Yep. All right, it is internet. So what you'd be able to do is email credits at earth2.io and say you'd like to make a request to withdraw a certain amount from the account. And the details below are your full legal name, your address, your E2 account name, E2 email address, and then the banking details. So the bank name, the bank account name, meaning like the name that's on the account, the bank account number, the amount to withdraw, and SWIFT number and IBAN number. But that could be, um, if you're American, disregard those and just put your routing number <coughs> and then kind regards. This is... Very, very standard for banking. I have so many people's driver's license and voided checks uh, and their <coughs> account numbers and their routing numbers because that's how I send money to them. Uh, I also have tax returns, socials, and whatever just to make sure they're real. But uh, again, this these people, they're not, even, <coughs> they're not even asking for your social. I have to ask for people's social because, again, I have to know that they're real, credit report, and whatever. Um, but this is just standard in banking, uh, so really don't be alarmed by it. <coughs> Okay, so I'm here to break down what, and then go over some questions later. It's going to be a long video. So I'm going to break down all of uh, what I think is important in the announcements that they had the other day, and then we go over a bunch of different questions. So strap in, guys, and uh, get some popcorn. All right, so we have here, no, put this over here. All right, so we have uh, in <coughs> the What to Expect to Earth 2. We currently define Earth 2 internally as the haven we all would have needed last year. So that right there is saying, like, these guys are doing it because, like, hey, we need this. Like, no, humans, the players, they need something to hang on to. Just, God forbid, people are suicidal or God, because people have become alcoholics because of this. People had to spend time with their abusers, and it's just not a good time. But they are doing this, and their mindset is saying, like, this is for the people. This is something the same way that Tesla and uh, Elon Musk are deciding, like, hey, the world needs this. This is something that they think the world needs, and I'm right there with them. Uh, they said this is a rather uh, broad terrain, admittedly, but it allows us flexibility when we need. With that, they're coming. They're talking about the overall uh, trading part, and it's also very hard. Here are decades of game design experience to teach us to not allow ourselves to kill options at such an early stage. What they're talking about this is they're just saying like, hey, we don't. Uh, if anyone's seen Scrubs, you need wiggle room. They want to be pretty ambiguous, like Tesla did on the earnings call. So, like, we want to grow about 50% each year. They didn't give an actual guidance. These guys aren't given actual guidance just because they don't want to say something, and then, God forbid, something comes up that they're not aware of or they didn't plan on. Like, the reason why a lot of these withdrawals are taking so long is because they don't, they want to cover all their bases, and they don't want people using this as a place to launder money. So, they have to try to cover their bases, get legal team involved and everything, make sure that. Um, they can look out for that and watch for and they could code that into the game as well So again, they don't want to say something and God forbid some lawsuit happens where they have to stop um, Production or the servers or whatever um, If something comes up, they don't want to say like oh we said it was gonna be here uh, In like February of this year and now it's gonna be like March of this year because of whatever reason and upset people uh, As far as the game design experience teaches us again Nathaniel and Wolfgang have been working on this for uh, Working in this game. There's so much gaming technology and experience here. Um, I'm very, very excited. When they say phase two will allow you to mine resources and optimize this process through successive tiers of research and production. Okay, what that means is that you are gonna be able to uh, ex not ex exercise your uh, mining rights. I mean like, okay, you can only mine this fast, but after experience completing other tasks, you're gonna be able to mine much faster. It's basically levels. For, like think of them as Pokemon, they learn new moves and they'll be able to get stronger, their attack gets stronger after they do a couple of different uh, battles. Shout out to uh, Aria Realty who just hit 2,000 subs. Congrats to him, he's my buddy. Hoping that I can hit that at some point in February as well. Um, so uh, anyway, like I was saying, if you are building up this machine, it is a very good strategy to say like, okay, well this machine can uh, spawn this many and mine this much resources. Let me put all of my 
uh, credits and experience into this machine because I think this resource is more important than this resource that's being spawned here. And then you could just do that, put all of it into one, you could put them all into equally, whichever you decide. Um, always depending on the land you own, the things you do with it, and the buildings you decide to build. So it could be that the land that you own, whether it's sand in the desert or on the beach, or water if you own a river, like I do, I own a river in the um, in Brazil, that will depend that on how fast it spawns. Maybe the desert only spawns once every couple hours, where or, or once every couple days, whereas ones in water spawn a lot quicker. Where And again, if you terraform it, you can be able to be like, hey, I'm going to spend a couple of credits on a terraform it so I can not only get um, more of these, but I just get them quicker. That's something you'll be able to do as well. I say depending on the land that you own, the things that you do with it. So if you decide that this land is going to be a racetrack or whatever, maybe it doesn't spawn as many materials, or maybe it doesn't spawn at all, or if it does spawn, can players pick those up as uh, the resources are spawning? Can they pick them up as they're going by? That's something that they still haven't answered yet, but it's something I'm very, very excited for. And the buildings you decide to build, if, you, if it's like, um, not Paper Mario, Mario Party, and I think Mario Party 7, where you say, okay, you have a two-star hotel, and it only gives you a certain amount of uh, money if people land on it. But if you have a three-star three hotel, okay, now it costs people a lot more money to land on it. So maybe if you have um, something that has nothing there, and then you build a shack, maybe instead of getting one resource a day, you get two resources a day. You upgrade the house, and you build a house, and then it gets three resources a day. You get a mansion, you get a hotel, vice versa. That's something that could be able to be built into the game as well. Uh, they say it's possible that it's uh, special usefulness will only be revealed later. Uh, they're going as far as tile producing, so maybe something that doesn't seem so special now will be special in the future. Um, they say if you're sitting on a literal gold mine, yes, well, that will come in handy soon. And sitting on a metaphorical one without even realizing it for years until suddenly a formerly undiscovered raw material under their soil becomes the most important element for an exciting new technology demanded by basically everyone yet basic raw materials will be produced by every bit of land anyway. So right away, we're going to have uh, tiles that are going to spawn whatever they're going to spawn. But let's say if it spawns wood, and it's like, well, I have so many other things that wood, I'm just going to sell this, this tile because I don't want it. You might not want to do that because that, even though that's only spawning wood right now, eventually this means we will have tiles that will produce two resources. We're going to have tiles that produce not just one thing, but multiple things because they say basic raw materials, meaning plural, will be produced by every bit of land. So maybe it's to the point where already you're seeing, okay, well, I'm getting water and wood from this one, and then I'm getting uh, stone and metal from this one. I don't know how many materials they're going to have. They haven't been clear with that yet, but that's just something that could be really cool. They say aim to start rolling out parts of phase two in a few weeks from now. And this again, this was a couple days ago. So that being said, there's not just going to be, okay, here's phase two. Here's going to be the first part of phase two where we could just mine. Maybe another part of phase two where we could build. Another part where we can trade. Um, I think the trading will probably come before the building. Um, you'll find that your land starts producing essence. And again, essence is the basis of everything. It's pretty much an EV. For those who don't know what an EV is, an EV in Pokemon can evolve into whatever it wants. It can evolve into a, a water Pokemon, a fire Pokemon, psychic Pokemon, whatever it is. You just have to have the right so stone. So similarly here, if a bunch of your tiles are generating essence and you just need an item to turn that essence into whatever you want, that's another reason why people can trade on the open marketplace if they have certain items to trade. Um, I'm very, very excited about that. Um, except maybe uh, later in the game, those rarer resources that they said that everyone will want, that only a few people have, that's probably something that essence won't be able to turn into just because it's so rare. Um, it reflects the place you own, or uh, the place you own knows what's in the ground, and in later upgrades will be able to produce that essence. Um, so if you have an essence, maybe it is geared towards one thing. This essence is half fire, and then this essence is half water. And maybe you don't have the water, you have half an essence of fire. It just costs you a little bit extra time or credits to turn that fire into water or water into fire, vice versa. Or if you're Jesus, water into wine. I think that'd be great. Um, the teleportation system will also allow users 
uh, to teleport to your property, you'll probably be given a link that you can share. Uh, you can share, and if others like what's on your property, they can share it with their friends list. Picture it like a Facebook feed where it's like, oh, um, let's be friends. And then they're suddenly allowed to see everything that you do, and you have this feed where you can share it. What did my new friend just share? He thinks it's cool. She thinks it's cool. Let me use that link and go check it out. That's how you can go viral. That's how you can get, uh, by word of mouth, a lot of ad revenue in this game. And it'll happen very, very quickly because, if, again, the cream will rise to the top. At first, it's going to be whoever builds things the fastest. And, oh, okay, you're the only one with a completed dot, 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 whatever. Um, great, everyone's going to go to you until somebody else creates something bigger and better. Uh, and then there's two of them. So, again, this is something where uh, right now the, the demand for completed uh, objects and buildings are going to be so big. Whoever builds something first is just going to be first to market. And then everyone else will try to just take a piece of it. So I'm very excited for that. Larger properties will be able to register a more premium teleportation name. So if you have a larger property, maybe it's not just, um, oh, here's, here's my link, and you don't know what you're going to on that link when you go through that teleportation device. But larger properties, maybe this link says a gun range. This link says a bowling alley. Or this link says um, bomb game, where you are an EOD person trying to defuse bombs. Whatever it is, I thought it would be very, very interesting to have that in the name of the link instead of just XYZ. Uh, after users have a fair warning to take advantage of this incredibly important teleportation system, we will also add the ability for users to then subdivide their properties. Now, why would we need to have fair warning to take advantage of teleporting before subdividing properties? It doesn't really make sense unless they probably just want everyone to get used to the mechanics first and then give us the ability to subdivide if we want. They probably just don't want to throw too much of uh, too much at us at once. Um, a little further down the road, we'll also improve the tile class system to make it fit the new experience. I did not go over this the other day, but I have said in the past that it would make sense so that class four tiles will produce the most resources as that gives newcomers a fair chance at competitively playing without spending too much money. I think that's what they're hinting at here. And that's something that I'm, I'm okay with. I'm on board. I don't care that I spent so much money on class one tiles and class two tiles because we're, get, we're already reaping the benefits and rewards from that just by getting land income tax, by getting referral codes, being here early. That's what we're getting. It, again, just because people got here late doesn't mean they should, penal, should get penalized for that. I like that idea. That also gives other people, us that have been here a while, oh, I, I was never buying class four because I thought it was useless. But now that incentivizes us to reinvest in the game, to buy those class four tiles because they might be producing so much more resources than our class one resources or our class one tiles. Um, a PVP system beneficial to most, if not all, who opt in. This is something I want to go over because maybe if you lose, you drop loot and then the other person gets a percentage of what you drop. Now, I hear what you're saying. Chavez, that's not beneficial to me who just dropped that loot. But if you, you know, die or faint or whatever they have the mechanics in the game as, when you wake up, you probably wake up with your full loot available with you. But the other person just gets a bonus for defeating you in battle, that type of deal. Um, they say phase two will largely be about adding more purpose and ability to your land, customizing it and adding things to it, using it uh, and more. We'll release further details on these features as they become confirmed from within. So that tells me that... Um, it's not just going to be about um, um, it's not just going to be about building your own thing. I think what th that means is that okay, each house or shack is going to be at first they're going to look the same, but as you customize it, that's what gives it your creative touch. If anyone remembers in uh, Victorious, where they all have these amazing amazing lockers, they all start out as Tories, just random locker and it's plain but they customize it to make it their own and it becomes so beautiful that all the lockers just show personality that's what i think will happen is that you're just going to have normal houses and they all look the same but as you customize it that's something that could be really cool although what i do think would be fun is having a type of uh like a city where it's all the same houses they're all just this one thing and to try to play like a good hide and seek game a good manhunt game in there because you won't be able to tell 
where everyone is because all the houses look the same. You won't be able to go on the mic and say, oh, yeah, the house with the orange uh, orange roof. Don't go in there. Uh, it's booby-trapped. You won't be able to say that because all the houses look the same. I just think that's something that's really cool. Possibilities are endless with that. Moving on. To give you a glimpse of how it will look, we will release a video of Earth 2 terrain system very soon, which we will show you how far we have come already. Okay, so remember, the developers have said that no other game has this engine that they're running. So those of you really into graphics will be very, very, very happily surprised. And again, they said this the other day, trailer is done. The trailer has been done for a couple weeks. Um, Wolfgang even said in Discord today they just want to uh, make sure that they're available. Well, because they know this is going to pop as soon as it, <laughs> as soon as it releases. Uh, at some point, uh, you will surely have your own avatar and will be highly customizable. Important. Uh, we want individuals roaming Earth too. We want you to have your own house. We want you to meet each other, communicate to build communities, and experience this new world together. Can you say real life Facebook meets Animal Crossing? Poor people can have the same or even better clothes and houses as rich people if they have tiles that spawn really good resources. Again, this is something where I love the equality in this. And it's not like a quality of outcome. It's a quality of opportunity where if you work hard in the game, if you do whatever, if you grind, you can have things better than people that have the same opportunity but just didn't work as hard. That's what I love about this. And making everything customizable is absolutely amazing. Um, <coughs> Chances to build communities of all sorts, raising the values of your lands. Okay, they say, we dream of all kinds of entertainment and businesses and chances to build communities of all sorts, comma, raising the values of your lands. So there's probably something to be said about having all of these mega cities. Maybe bonuses for peaceful communities, bonuses for the biggest community, the smallest one, um, warring communities on the other end that have just, you know, are undefeated. So... There's something about it. There is absolutely something about these mega cities that they have probably seen that and decided to put that like, oh, people are making mega cities. Let's give them a bonus for being really creative and innovative. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting a little excited about that. Um, we're learning to bit by bit. We are currently planning to add various games. OK, so this is something where they're going to add them themselves. They themselves are saying we are going to add it. And that's not including us, the games that we create. So, um, without going into any details now, the elements of which you can produce the inside, inside the economic simulation. So they're obviously going to have their own economy, uh, use for your own benefit on E2. Trade them or use them in competitive games you might invent. So basically, there's going to be multiple ways to spend or invest the money inside that. You can buy things to customize your avatar or your house, or you can invest them in other things in the economy. Again, if somebody has are very good at um, defense and they say, like, okay, we can make sure your materials get from here to here over time and they're really good, but they don't – and they have a good training system on how to do that, but they don't have the people, you might be able to invest in that company so that they can hire more people, get more jobs done, and then you're able to benefit by sharing in the profits of that. I think that's phenomenal. And continue on saying – there will be a common resource market, which will also depend on the technologies developed in Earth 2. So that resource market, again, Earth 2 themselves is going to have one. But then us, PvP, PvE, we're going to have a secondary market ourselves where we can buy and sell stuff to and from each other. That's what I'm excited about. I'm excited about helping people that don't have enough money or whatever for that and just giving them a better bang for their buck. Um, there will be PvE and PvP challenges I don't even know how to respond to that. Um, I'm, I'm very excited for those. In our vision, all the structures of Earth 2 will connect to one big social ex social experience. So there will probably be, again, you'll have your link for people to teleport, um, and that'll be advertised probably in the main hub, wherever it is. Uh, and you could probably pay other people to advertise your link to go to your tiles to try to get ad revenue for other foot traffic. Um, but there will also probably be in everyone's um, house or portal a main portal. Oh, okay. I can go here to get to the main hub, the one big social experiment, experiment where everyone is. Um, so it makes sense that E2 would have that a main hub somewhere saying like, oh, here's a fact, here's directions, uh, here's what's hot based on the algorithms and what people are visiting, that type of thing. Um, oh, all right, almost done. There will be emerging opportunities for the players of Earth 2 that we wouldn't think of now. Phase 1 has shown us this. So everyone comment down below 
what you think I should ask the developers in Discord because clearly they listen to us. They watch our videos and they listen to what we have to say in Discord and out. Um, and then a time may dawn on Earth 2 when you, us, the players, can use this platform for your own business, your own businesses, your own developments in a time when you can basically sign your own Declaration of Independence. What I'm interpreting from that is they're saying financial independence, being able to say like, hey, um, similar to what people did in uh, Second Life about, uh, hey, if you have an island, people want to rent out that island, they pay you real money to do that. You could have businesses and that in this game. And what I believe, what I'm aiming to do, and I've told people that I'm moving to Florida next year, I have a one-year lease on this apartment. My goal for this year, main goal, I have a bunch of others, but this main goal is to make money, so much money in Earth 2, that I can leave this office, that I do not have to work 80 hours a week before uh, doing uh, what I'm doing for YouTube. That is my that is my goal. Okay, so moving on to questions. Um, will New York still be known as New York if we christen a new mega city there and call it something else? That's a very good question. If most people, they'll probably be known as both. If most people say like, oh, let's go to New York, but then everyone there knows it as Chavez Topia, <laughs> then it's um, has two names, Chavez Topia. Um, I don't know if there'll be any official maps. There might be, it might be very hard because if you're saying, oh, that's New York, but then people get confused as nobody calls it New York. They call it Chavez Topia. It's just going to be very hard to do. Maybe people might sell maps like town maps in red and blue. Um, and then they just might have to be altered. Um, question. If I owned a stadium, could I make money by selling tickets to events at the stadium? You probably could if you got people to go there. Uh, but at the same time, if you're going to say like, hey, you can't come in here without paying you're probably going to turn away a lot. Like some people will still come and they'll still pay just to see what's going on. But a lot of people will be like, no, nah, I'm not paying for that. Other people are doing it for free. Because again, the goal is to get foot traffic so you can get ad revenue. So if you're putting up like a fence saying you can only get in here by paying, I think you're just um, hurting yourself, shooting yourself in the foot at that point. Um, Earth2 Mastery has stated that the developers said tile sales will stop at 50 billion. Why? Okay, so... Um, I'm unsure why they'd stop people from buying. Um, they do say that they have reasons for everything that they do. Now, they did say what I went over. They will have mini games uh, that they themselves are bringing in. So maybe they want to use uh, those unused tiles, those unbought tiles, terraform them and turn them into whatever they want to for those mini games. That's probably, that's what I'm thinking. They could have something that I'm not thinking of, but that's my interpretation of why they're going to stop selling tiles at 50 billion just my opinion <laughs> when will you make a mega city or discord um <coughs> right now again i i'm not making much from youtube i'm making between 10 and 12 dollars a day oh i'm gonna all right if you guys watch um the ads for 31 seconds i don't care how long they have they're seven minutes 30 minutes don't watch it if they're 30 minutes but if they are a minute just watch 31 seconds of it that's, that helps. That helps with um, getting paid, but also smashing that like button helps with the YouTube algorithm. It really does. Um, when I'm able, I, I know I said $200 a day uh, from YouTube or the game or whatever, I will um, quit. Um, I will do you guys one better. If I'm making $100 a day consistently on YouTube, I will cut down significantly on that, and that is when I will start making a mega city and discord when i'm doing a hundred dollars a day um that you guys have my word right now and if i don't do that hold me to it consistently ask me what am i making a day what is happening what and and hold me to that um do locations in e2 have the ability to increase real world land values yes a hundred percent if you have someone that made let's say somebody bought their bar in uh in, in real life, they have this bar. They bought that bar in Earth 2. They recreate that bar. They make it better. And you have a million people coming to this bar because he has all of these guests coming on and they're they're performing there. People are going to say, like, I wonder what this bar is like in real life. Yes, that could absolutely do that. And you have real people going to that location in there as well. Um, so, yes, absolutely. 
How will developers draw in people who don't want to buy land? This is something where they're doing that by having, they said they're going to rework the class class system, the class one tiles and whatever. If you have people coming in that, um, oh, who don't want to buy land, you they're making the enter um, the barrier to entry very, very minimal, very, very small. So you can go in, not buy land, and you can collect resources on other people's land, sell those resources so you can come in and make money without having to invest a single penny. That's what you can do, which is absolutely amazing. And let's say if there's free tournaments, somebody has a tournament uh, that they say, like, who can stack the most Oreos, whatever it is. And they say they're going to give out prizes for it. You can go in, win that tournament, and get money. That's how you can go in, make money without buying land. You're saying, Chavez, why would they put on a tournament for free? Because if you do, more people will come to compete because it's free and the chance to win money. Why does Guidebook Gaming constantly give away class one tiles? Because he knows that eventually more and more people will start coming in specifically just to get something for free. They're, he's going to get more views, he's going to get more subs, he's going to get paid on Twitch because of that. Um, when will you upgrade quality of your videos? <coughs> Again, I just got over COVID. I just was literally got over homelessness, partially, not really, but kind of slipped in my car for a few days. I just spent $4,400 getting into this apartment. I have $2,000 left on this trophy Kangaskhan. Uh, I do not have a lot of money right now. All of my money is literally in Tesla stock, aging receivables, and Pokemon cards, and this game. I will upgrade the quality of the videos. I will get a camera. I will get audio equipment. I'll have a better backdrop than just the office or my room. Um, give me a month or so. I promise. Motiva Productions said that some of his friends predict that tiles can go for a hundred or a thousand dollars. What's your prediction? Short term, anything can happen. Long term, what I think is that the tile price will go up to those levels and beyond, not from people buying tiles, but from the value of the properties, the ad revenue <coughs> of the properties. What I predict is going to be that people are going to build such amazing things. People are going to come, again, something as simple as Oreo tournaments can happen if, you, if you're giving away something, giving away resources, giving away actual e-credit money. Um, if you can do that, I, I certainly would. Um, and then as there's so much foot traffic in these places, the ad rev will be so popping. Again, big industries and institutions aren't in here yet, but some company will come in <coughs> with, um, let's say this property that is really only worth in-game um, because of the way the tile system is, maybe $50, $40 a tile, and let's say it's, you know, a um, hundred tiles, it's worth $4,000. But some company comes in and says like, oh, you're making so much ad revenue. Let me buy this from you. Even though it's only worth in-game for $4,000, I'll give you $20,000 for it. And think like, what? Why would they do that? Because of the ad revenue that's coming in. They want to buy that, give them four or five times what it's worth so that they can't say no so that they can capitalize on this. And for those of you that are saying like, oh, I don't really think that'll happen. Okay. I've gone over this before. I have spent in 2020, me, Lonely Chavez, over $100,000 in Pokemon cards. There are, there are companies that I am rich small by, small, because they are spending nine times what I spend in a year. They spend nine times that in a single month in Pokemon cards. There are companies that are just buying out collections faster than I could try to look at them. That same thing is going to happen in Earth 2. You say like, oh, you know what? I'm buying other people's properties that have a little bit of ad revenue. There's going to be other companies telling people like, oh, I'm going to buy your place for 5x of what it's worth in game. People will be like, okay, that's exactly what's going to happen. And that will increase the tile price. It won't be people buying tiles um, that'll increase that price. It'll be people buying properties for far more than what it's worth in game. That's what will increase it. Um, yes. Uh, and also when tiles produce things too, when that happens in months or years, when suddenly this thing that only produced wood now produces this magical thing that everyone's going to want. Yeah. That tile that's only worth maybe like a hundred bucks at that time, thousand bucks minimum. Um, 
how long will you hold for? Will you ever cash out? Um, this is something that I, this is the last thing I would cash out on. Not because I think that, you know, the $30,000 net, you know, thing that I have, net worth that I have in here is going to go to a million dollars. I'm this is the last thing I'm going to cash out on because one because it's one of the smallest positions I have and two because this is fun. We can't even do anything yet and this is fun. I love the camaraderie. I love the community. There were times in the military right where we didn't have this much camaraderie. The, the only time yeah okay something sucked and it stuck together buddies hey um but this is something that you don't get a lot of different places. This is something where you you don't get this sense of fam, familial family and self-worth and inclusion. I, you don't get this in other places. It's just very – what they did is they – I don't even know if they intended to do this. They probably just intend to have a fun game. But the way people are coming together, the way people are supporting each other is just phenomenal. The way people are just – again, I, I have to bring up you know Tech Ops and Guidebook Gaming because they just – Building this community, a, a safe space of let's all be friends. It's like it's like they all said, like, hey, you know, they're all singing Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds or All You Need Is Love. Um, th- this is this is the last thing I will cash out on. Um, I, I, I don't think I'll, I'll ever sell a- anything in here. Um, where is your mustache? <laughs> um, so I have alopecia, which means I can't grow. I mean, I can a little bit. But it's not compared to this. So I, I can't really grow facial hair on, on certain parts of my face. Um, where is land income tax? You just have to wait. You just have to be patient. This is something where you're going to have... Uh, I, I've only gotten it... Uh, I haven't gotten it in three days. I'm, I'm not tripping. Um, that's just me. How will it look if there is true creativity? Could one... T- <laughs> this is going to be great. Could one tile be PvP... Absolute warring monsta- mon- monstrosities. Blah, 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 blah. We're learning today. Monstrosity. Nature is metal. And then the tile right next to it. Be Hello Kitty Land. <laughs> so uh, guilds will have to work together to make something cohesive. Um, yeah, th- this is possible. And this happens in real life too. If anyone's been to Miami, it will be raining on, down torrential pour, pouring on one side of the street. On the other side, it'll be sunny. I haven't experienced that anywhere outside of there. Um, it's really cool, um, but that happens already. So yeah, there's a potential, especially if tiles can be terraformed. Here's snow. Here's ice. Here's lava. The floor is lava. Everyone comment your floor is lava means down below. Here is the um, you know rainwater. Like it, it could be so different. Um, like could you imagine? I can't wait because I know Ryan Reynolds is a troll like this. He will totally buy a whole place, make it Hello Kitty Land because that's what he does. He'll just be like, oh. He'll have a plate. He'll have a Hugh Jackman um, a photo of him up there, probably doing inappropriate things to him. Uh, I thought it'd be really funny. I, I could picture Ryan Reynolds doing that. Um, if I could go back to when this first started, how much would I have spent? Knowing what I know now, I would have sold half my Tesla and half my Pokemon cards and put two to three hundred thousand dollars into this. Yeah, easily. Do I get to pick ads? Uh, no, I do not. I do not get to pick ads. Um, but again, if they're However long they are, please watch 31 seconds of it. Uh, if they're only 15 seconds, please watch the whole ad. Please don't skip ad. Please, please, please. Um, Alexander Matheson says, when the game, when the full game comes out, you're going to be one of the main YouTubers people go to. Oh, thank you. Oh, that means so much. Um, this is a long video, guys. I'm so sorry. I love you all. Uh, but please comment, like, and subscribe. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. I hope you enjoyed this video.